welcome to our virtual Van Gogh to Play-Doh. So today we're going to be talking all about movement and how we move our bodies in art. But before we get started, parents, if you want to grab a few materials, I'm going to be using this washcloth. Um, it can be a towel or a blanket if you don't have a washcloth. Um, the second thing I'm going to be using is this washboard. And if you don't have a washboard, you can use a cutting board um, or a hard surface. Um, that's flat. And then the last thing that I'm going to be using is this big orange bucket. Now I'm sure many of you don't have a big orange bucket, so you can use a bowl or a big container. Um, so if you want to go gather up those three things, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to be talking about this painting right here. It is in our Women in the Collection exhibit and the title is Wash Day in the Plains by Minerva Teichert. Now can anybody tell what these women are doing? What are they doing? They're washing their clothes. Do you wash your clothes like this? How do you wash your clothes? I usually use my washer and dryer. But these women lived a long time ago and they were pioneers. So they had to travel from one end of the country to the other. And this was before planes or cars were invented or a washer and dryer was invented. So they had to walk all the way and they had to do their laundry or wash their clothes outside. So we can see how these women wash their clothes first. They would boil some water right over here and then they would put the hot water that they boiled in this bucket right here. And this woman, she's scrubbing. So can everybody follow me and do this motion? She is scrubbing her clothes, scrubbing all of the dirt out with soap and hot water. Okay, then the second thing they would do is right here. They would wring their clothes out. So they would wring it out. Can everybody follow me? Wring it out, wring all the water out. Perfect. So then they would shake it out right here. This woman right here, she's shaking. She's shaking her clothes out. And this would get all of the extra water and wrinkles out. So they would scrub, wring, and shake it out. And because they didn't have dryers, they had to hang their clothes up in the sun for the sun to dry. So we're going to hang our clothes up. So can everybody hang your clothes up? Perfect. So we scrub, wring, shake, and hang our clothes up. So I think we're ready to grab our materials and I'm going to grab my washcloth and first, what's the first motion? We have to scrub, we have to scrub. Awesome, can everybody scrub their clothes? Great, okay, I think this is scrubbed. So then what's the next motion? We have to wring it out. We have to wring our clothes out. Wring it out, get all of the extra water out. Perfect, okay, what's the next motion? We have to shake, we have to shake our washcloth out, our clothes out. Okay, then the last motion, we have to hang our clothes up to dry. So we don't have to dry our clothes anymore, right? We can put it in the washer. Well, what do you do when all of your clothes are ready to be put away? What do you do? You have to fold them. And if you don't know how to fold, that's okay, you can ask for help. So we're gonna fold our washcloth. I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times. Done, it's ready to be put away. Awesome, you guys are so great, you did such a great job. And we learned all about how we move our arms just like these women, and you moved like these women in art. That's pretty cool, you guys did so great. Thanks for joining, bye guys. Hi guys, okay, so we are ready to do our art project. So we just looked at this painting and how we move our bodies um, like these women do and how we wash our clothes. And we talked about how they have to hang their clothes up to dry, right? We have to hang up our clothes. So we are going to make these little washwoman clothes pins and I'm going to do a quick tutorial to show you how we make them. 
So what you're going to need is a clothespin like this, some scissors, a sharpie, a muffin tin, a piece of cloth, and a piece of yarn. Now I'm using a hot glue gun, but you can use any type of glue. You can use Elmer's glue, anything to kind of make things sticky. So we're going to start by taking our clothespin and I'm going to use this piece of cloth for her shirt or her blouse. So all I'm going to do is take the glue stick or the glue gun and just do a little line of glue and then I'm going to stick the piece of cloth on it. Then I'm just going to roll it around. Then I'm going to do one more little thing of glue to secure the other end. And I'm going to do one more because I'm feeling extra secure. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so now she's got her top part. Awesome. Now we're going to use our muffin tin. What I like to do is fold it in half. And I'm going to take my scissors and just do a little snip in the middle. Um, and sometimes it might need to be a bigger snip. Just play around with it. Um, so I'm going to do just a little bit of a bigger hole so we can get this over her head. That might need to be a little bit bigger just depending on the size of your clothespin. Okay, I think this is ready. Oops. So I like to stick it over her head, um, but you can try putting it underneath um, her little legs as well. And I'm just gonna slide it through. Awesome. Okay, there's her skirt. So we've got her body done. Now we're gonna move on to her eyes. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and do a little face. I'm just gonna do two eyes and a smiley face, but you can decorate her head however you want. And then if you have extra pieces of cloth, you can put a bonnet on like this one that she has a little bonnet that you can just take extra scraps of fabric and glue it on there. Um, but we're just gonna do some braids on this one. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna glue on top of her head. Just do a little bit of glue. And I'm gonna stick the yarn on top. And now she has braids. That's it. You guys are good to go. Hope you have fun. Hi, my name is Jane, and this is Van Gogh to Play-Doh. So this is a print called Celerity, and I want you all to look at this print and try and think about where this is. Where, what does this look like? Where are we right now? Yeah, it kind of looks like a desert, right? And there's a lot of different things that help us think it's a desert. What are some of the things that you can see that make you think it's a desert? Yeah, we see this sand on the ground and there's some colors like this yellow and pink and this purple that might help us think it's a desert. Also in Utah, we oftentimes see these mountains in the deserts that we go to. So I want you all to imagine that you're here in this desert. Maybe you're with your family or your friends, but you're here. And I want you to look around this desert and see something that is really different than any desert you've ever seen before. What do you notice that is different? Now, I don't know about you, but I have never seen these swirly lines in a desert before. These are really different, right? And I want you to imagine that while you're in this desert, you're going to move with these lines. So do you think that with these lines, you would move really slow like this? You're just moving really slow. 
Or do you think you would run really fast like this? I don't know about you guys, but if I was in this desert, I would definitely be moving as fast as I could with these lines. So now we're all going to pretend on the count of three that we're going to jump into this desert as if we're actually there and we're all going to move as fast as we can in place. Okay, so we're all going to go on the count of three. We're just going to jump and then run in place as fast as we can. Okay, one, two, three. Jump. Awesome, you guys. That was kind of a workout, huh? That was like good running through the desert. Good job. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So I hope you remember that desert with all the swirly lines and running really fast through that desert. But now we're going to make an art project that goes along with the swirly lines that we ran with. So we're going to start by it with some shaving cream. And I have put half a sheet of shaving cream just big enough to fit half a piece of paper on this tray. And then we're gonna choose two colors of food coloring, and I chose yellow and red, but you can choose any colors that you'd like. So we're just gonna take these and just make a few drops. I'll just do three red, and then I'm gonna do three, yellow. Okay, and then you're going to take a fork and you're going to swirl around the colors. And you can swirl them as much or as little as you'd like, but usually you get the best results, the best swirl, when you just make a few swirls so that you don't blend the colors too much. Okay, so now that I've blended those two colors, I'm going to take this half sheet of cardboard paper or cardstock paper and I'm just going to press it down into the shaving cream. And just kind of pat it lightly so that it doesn't go under the shaving cream but I get the color on the front of it. So then I'm just going to grab a corner and pull up the paper. And you'll see that I just have a little bit of shaving cream left on here. If you want more than that, you can just pat a little bit harder. So then I bring this um, paper over to a sink and I'm using a ruler, but you can use a credit card or anything that has a nice hard edge that can help you scrape this off. And you don't have to wait very long, just 30 seconds or so, but you scrape off the shaving cream and then the food coloring will stay on your paper and you'll have a nice swirly picture that can remind you of the desert. <laughs> and now that we've noticed how we can move really quickly, we've moved our legs through this desert, we've gone our very fastest, now we're going to learn how we can move a different part of our body at a different pace. Hi guys, welcome to this video of Van Gogh to Play-Doh. So, before we get started, parents, this is a message to you. We are going to be using two materials today in this video, and they are rhythm sticks. Now, of course, you can use any substitute for rhythm sticks. Um, if you go into your kitchen and you have two wooden spoons, you can use that to make music, but that is one activity that we are going to be doing. So if you want to pause this video and gather those materials, and then we'll get started. Okay, so we are going to be talking about this beautiful painting called Trifloria. Now hopefully you've seen the other two videos where Jane showed us how some art makes us want to move our legs. And Jamie showed us how some art makes us want to move our arms with those washerwomen. But now we're going to be talking about this painting, and we're going to be moving a different kind of body part. When you look at this painting, do you know what body part you're moving? Can you tell? Okay, if you need a hint. We're going to be moving our eyes today. We move our eyes all around this canvas. 
But why is that? Why are we moving our eyes back and forth when we didn't necessarily do that with Jane or Jamie's? Now the answer to that is because this beautiful piece is covered in patterns. Now, if you need a reminder, a pattern is a shape that happens over and over and over again. So for example, this woman down here, she's wearing a shirt with all these polka dots on them. And those polka dots happen over and over again. So that's an example of a pattern. So I want you to see if you can find any other patterns in this piece and point them out, okay? Now, I'm going to point out a few. So some of my favorite patterns in this painting happen to be the paisley pattern in the background. If you see that oval with the fun detailing, swirly detailing around the edge. We also have a diamond shaped pattern and that's over in the background and it kind of happens in these stripes. Now the third pattern that I want to point out is this one right here. It's kind of like a star pattern. Okay, so we've pointed out a couple different patterns in this painting, and maybe you found a few that are different than what I pointed out, in which case that's amazing. But did you know that we can find patterns in music as well as art? Okay, so one pattern in music is when we clap or beat out a rhythm. So for example, That rhythm is, a, is an example of a pattern. And we hear those claps happen over and over again. And it's the same thing. So what I want you to do is at the beginning of this video, your parents should have helped you find a couple materials. So I have these two sticks with me right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our own pattern in music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat these sticks twice and then I'm going to turn the time over to you for you to beat your two sticks twice as well. And we'll count out the beats, okay? So for example, I'm going to do one, two, and then on your end, you're going to beat out three, four. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that was so great, guys. Um, that is an example of how we can find patterns in music. But now we're actually going to do some fun artwork that goes with our discussion all about patterns. Hi, guys. Welcome to the second video in which we are talking about Triforia. Now we're going to be diving into the artwork that we're going to make along with this piece. So right now I have this example up and this is actually a piece of paper with all these different pattern texture rubbings. So parents, this might be a good time to pause the video after I describe the different materials that you're going to need. I have right here a simplified version of what I'm going to make. This is a printer sized sheet of blank paper, unlike this one, which is a little bit bigger and it is split up into four equal parts instead of six. So this should be a little bit easier to get your hands on. Along with that piece of paper, I have four different equal, um, sections of construction paper. I have two in green and two in pink. Now we do recommend that you only use two colors of construction paper because that way you also make a pattern with the colors that you put on this paper. So here you can see that we're just going to fit them like that. Just like that. Okay. Now, along with the blank sheet of paper and your cut-up construction paper, we also have our four textures that we're going to rub onto those construction papers. 
So now this is where it might be a little bit tricky, but we have glued different objects on foam cord just to make it a little bit easier to use. This example shows paper clips. This one is uh, popsicle sticks that we cut up and then placed in a fun pattern. This is uh, Velcro stickers, those little dot stickers. And then the last example is this piece of wood. Now the grain of the wood is actually going to show up really nicely on our construction paper. And so that's why we're using this. So like I said, that's probably the most difficult part about making this artwork, but you are more than welcome to walk around the house or the yard with your child and see if you can come up with something at home. Right now that it's springtime, a really good uh, thing to utilize is the leaves outside on the trees. You can actually take those and glue them down. And that is another way that you can make a fun pattern with the veins of the leaves showing up. Now, the other two materials you're going to need is just a simple glue stick and then either a white or black crayon. I have a black one right here and the paper has been taken off just so that I can use the long edge to rub and that will create a more even pattern. Okay, so like I said, you are more than welcome to go ahead and pause the video and gather those materials for this. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to find the things you're going to be using along with me. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and start. So I'm going to take my blank sheet of paper and just set it down in front of me. And like I said, it's been split into four equal parts. And then I'm going to take my first color, which I decide to be pink, and I'm going to place it on top of my pattern. And now I'm just going to use my black crayon and I'm going to rub my construction paper. I'm going to rub the crayon all over it so that the pattern of the wood shows up. So let me show you. So I'm going to hold the piece of paper down and I'm just rubbing really hard and I'm holding the paper in place so that the pattern shows up really well. And this is why we like to use the long end of the crayon because it makes this process go a little bit faster. Okay. So that's the example that I have with the wood. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab my glue stick and I'm just going to glue the back of it. Just add a little bit to all the corners, maybe a little in the middle, and I'm going to push it down onto my paper. Now kids, make sure you really push it down so that it sticks well to the piece of paper. Okay, so that's the first example that I have. Next, I'm going to be taking this piece of green construction paper, and I'm going to be using a whole different pattern. So for this one, I'm going to use these fun Velcro dots that we've put on this board. And just like the pink, I'm going to stick the green piece of paper down right on top. I'm going to take my crayon, and I'm going to rub really hard, make sure I get all those lovely dots on my green piece of paper. I want it to be pretty dark so that people can see this fun pattern. Okay, so that's the second example. And just like the first, I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and on the opposite side, I'm going to glue the edge of the piece of paper and now I'm just going to stick it right next to that pink sheet. Okay, so now we've got something that looks like this. So we've got two patterns next to each other and we're going to do the same thing over again. And I'm going to be using pink 
and I will use this pattern that I've made with popsicle sticks. So I'm going to take this pink sheet of paper, place it on top. By this point, you guys are pros, I'm sure. And I'm going to rub that. And if you need help keeping your paper in place, I'm sure your parents are more than happy to help you make sure that your paper is steady on that pattern. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so that's our third pattern. Gonna add a little bit of glue. And we're gonna place that underneath the green color. So at the very end, not only are we going to have a paper full of patterns, but the color itself is gonna be a pattern because it goes green, pink, green, pink, green, pink. Kind of like those polka dots, which happen polka dot after polka dot after polka dot. Okay, so we're going to do our last pattern on this green piece of paper. And we have paper clips that we've glued down. So, just like before, I'm going to rub this and see what fun design I can get out of this pattern. Okay, it looks like it's showing up pretty nicely. So that's what it came out to be. Now I'm going to put glue on the back of this as well. Okay, we're gonna push really hard, we're gonna rub it, make sure that all those edges are down and stay flat. Okay, so you might think that we're done, but I want you to do one last thing. I want you to sign your name because you just created something beautiful and you are the artist and artists sign their work. So go ahead and sign your name just like that. And you can hold it anyway, but this is an example of how we make patterns, how we can make patterns in our artwork, just like how the artist made Triforia. So I hope you enjoyed creating this artwork with me today and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much, guys. See you later. Bye.